Gary Gensler got absolutely destroyed in this last hearing in front of the whole world. Now, I have saved myself for a whole 24 hours not to see any of these clips. I want to react to it live on the camera right here. So let's get into this first clip by Mr. Warren Davidson. Chairman Gensler, your record of failures to protect investors and abuses of power make it clear that we need to restructure the Securities and Exchange Commission. Mm -hmm. the failures are many, but let me cite some of the abuses. You average more than two rules proposals a month. You inappropriately provide inappropriately short comment periods. You have unworkable and unlawful ESG disclosure mandates on the market. You have essentially a Hotel California rule for crypto where you can check in anytime you like, but you can never leave. Ah, in this discovery with no resolution and no clarity for the captives uh, in the market. You have unworkable proposals for overhauling equity market structure, a de facto ban on crypto through proposed custody rule. You have high staff turnover, unhappy people leaving your office, and unhappy companies and capital leaving our country. I didn't know that. I didn't know there was loads of people leaving the company. That's super interesting because if you if you're one of those normal people in in working in the government, or let's say you're working at the SEC and you're there to really, truly provide clarity and protect investors, and then you see this stuff going on, it makes you feel dirty when you get home, even though you're not, you're part of it because you're part of the company, but you're not, you don't want it to be like that. You want it to be the true definition of the SEC, but the leader kind of acting the way he's leading, it makes people want to leave. Super interesting. Uh, to correct a long series of abuses, I'm introducing legislation that removes the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, and replaces the role with an executive director that reports to the board where all authority would reside. Wow. <laughs> this is uh, Gary Gensler resign, hashtag Gary Gensler resign, like in person. Former chairs of the SEC will be un ineligible under my pr proposed bill. Uh, and this isn't just my take. It resonates across the political yep. spectrum. The American people want democratic access to capital, retail investor participation, you can't just exclude retail investors from markets and claim it's for their own good. Our markets need to function and flourish, and I yield back. And I yield back. Here we go. That's a mic drop in, in these settings. Oh, my goodness. He told him. He really told him. Chair Gensler, I have a lot of questions in a limited amount of time, so if you could keep your answers to either a yes or a no, that will allow us to get through as many as possible. <laughs> a yes or a no. This is going to get hilarious. I already know it. You have to give a yes or a no. And he'll go, uh, well, back then, da, 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 da. He, he will go on about this. Effective is more difficult now for the digital asset industry to access financial products and services in the United States than it was, say, two years ago. Sir, I, I yes or no? running one of those businesses if they came into compliance. I think I'm reclaiming my it. time. The answer, sir, is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reclaiming my time. The answer is yes. <laughs> I love this. He, he, did you see how he sat there for a bit as well? Sir, I, I, I'm not running one of those businesses if they came into compliance reclaim your reclaim time buddy my time the answer sir is yes do you think you and the sec have had a role to play in that i think we have a role to protect the american investor and the capital markets and the reclaiming my time sir you have played a <laughs> role in that during your tenure at the sec how many rules has the sec finalized that actually accommodate the existing regulatory framework and are specifically to the digital in asset industry so the crypto market can come into compliance. That wasn't a yes or no question, so that was a bit of a trick, but let's see. It's there, rule books that are on the books for years, so we have not finalized any new rule specifically with regard to crypto. We've proposed some things in best execution. We've also... Uh, but I also want to take some time here. Crypto is a one trillion dollar market. A trillion. That is tiny. I can't even express how tiny that is in the scheme of all the money. I find it fascinating actually now. I'm just kind of like realizing this now. We're so in crypto so much and we're so involved that we think we know we believe it's the next thing and we know it's the best the next thing. But the lengths they're going to to regulate, hinder, you know, manipulate, delay all of these things for such a small market 
that truly says something about where they believe crypto is going and that matches where we believe crypto is going. There's no reason that any other market that's a trillion dollar market, they would go into this level of detail or worry about things to this degree other than crypto. So that that for us, that for should show that <laughs> where we're going is truly to the moon. Sir, reclaiming my time, the answer is zero. And how many enforcement actions has the SEC levied against digital asset companies during your tenure, sir? I think it's probably 40 or 50. The answer, sir, is about 55. <laughs> <laughs> I love this structure. He's got all the answers already and he just wants to highlight how this guy is like uh, snaking his way around the answers and he's got the answers already and reclaiming my time. <laughs> I love that phrase. That, that could go on a t-shirt. Failure in history is probably FTX at $9 billion. Were you the chairman of the SEC when FTX collapsed? Yes. Yay! And how many times did you meet we did it. He got a yes. It was undeniable. There was no snaking around. With FTX prior to their collapse. I think my public record shows two. You met it with FTX at least twice. And arguably, the second biggest crypto failure in history was Terra Luna. Who was the chairman of the SEC when Terra Luna collapsed, sir? We had brought... Uh, you were, sir, reclaiming my time. <laughs> Reclaim there my five time. five members on the commission. Do you believe your speeches and interviews are to serve as the official position of the SEC? There, uh, I can only speak for myself when I'm speaking. Again, sir, in a statement on the SEC website, you are quoted saying, the Kraken staking as a service enforcement action should make clear to the marketplace that staking as a service providers must register. But again, you haven't provided any rules for how that can be done. I must remind you, your public statements are not regulations. It's not responsible to expect the American people to assume your statements are a substitute for rules. Do you agree with this statement regarding the digital asset industry? The SEC needs additional congressional authorities to prevent transactions, products, and platforms from falling between the regulatory cracks. I think that it's a non -com largely non-compliant field. And Sir, again, you, I, I asked you to comply with my uh, questions, and I'm asking you if you agree with that quote. And I, I'm going to tell you, I'm quoting you from an August 3rd <laughs> article where you, uh, and I believe you told uh, Congressman oh earlier my God. that you need congressional authority to regulate stable coins, and stable coins happen to be a significant percentage of the crypto market. So the question is, when were you telling the truth? to Mr. Hill or to me, uh, you've got to start answering these questions in a more uh, transparent manner, sir. And, and he's actually, this is genius by Mr. Emma here. He's genius because what he's doing is highlighting how people want the information to be given. Like we want, we kind of want the SEC to be protecting us, right? And we want them to give clear instructions to companies on how to operate within this area right, to protect ourselves. But highlighted by this, because he's trying to reclaim his time and, and Gary's not letting, me, letting him uh, reclaim his time, is the way that he goes around the answers and it makes it more confusing the way he answers when really what we want are yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. That's what we want. And so he's highlighting that. I think this is truly, truly genius. Does it concern you, by the way, that your approach to the digital asset industry is actually driving this industry out of the United States? We're trying to drive it to compliance, and if they're not complying with the laws, then they shouldn't be offering their products. Reclaiming my time. Uh, Madam Chair, I would like to enter into the record this Wall Street Journal article from April 14th, 2023, detailing China's ploy to open its banking system to crypto firms in an effort to seize an opportunity created by our hostile regulatory environment, which, uh, Mr. Chair, you're a big with, part of. Without Look, objection. Chair Gensler, FTX was domiciled abroad and so is Binance, yet American consumers still had access to both. You can't really think that pushing this industry abroad is going to protect American consumers when it hasn't several times in the past on your watch. You say the crypto market is rife with non-compliance. However, existing SEC rules make no sense for blockchain-based companies and following them would actually kill these businesses. Your regulatory style lacks flexibility and nuance, and as a result, you've been an incompetent cop on the beat, doing nothing to protect everyday Americans and pushing American firms into the hands of the CCP. Your intention to work against SEC mission 
and put American investors in harm's way has been made very apparent, sir. It's been a year and a half since you've appeared before this committee. You need to answer to Congress about the issues that you've had with the SEC staff union, the work environment you've cultivated at the SEC that's led to hemorrhaging of senior staff, the intellectual inconsistency of your regulatory treatment towards Bitcoin spot ETFs, and your politicization of capital formation opportunities time your expired. treatment of certain specs. And that's just to name a few. <laughs> he caught fire at the end there. Oh my goodness. I have to just let these things play because the guy is on fire. <laughs> oh, this is bringing me such satisfaction. <laughs> I know it did to you as well. So let's get into the next one. Hey, real quick, last question. I think it might have came up. You were Hillary Clinton's uh, CFO in a campaign, right? It's part of my history. Were you? Yes or no? In 2016. Did you facilitate the payment for the Steele dossier since you were CFO of the Hillary Clinton campaign? Oh my goodness, I don't even want to see the answer to this. Wait, I need to go back a little bit. Look at his face. <laughs> Look at it. Did you facilitate the payment for the Steele dossier since you were CFO of the Hillary Clinton campaign? Sir. Yes or no? Sir. Yes or no? Sir. Sir, please don't do this to me. That, that was... Ah! <laughs> Oh my goodness, I haven't laughed like this for no, ages. You're under oath, Chairman Gensler, yes or I no? I know, it was not something I was aware of. I yield back the right. <sighs> Has he lied under oath? Facilitate the payment for the Steele dossier since you were CFO of the Hillary Clinton campaign? S sir. Yes or no? Sir. Yes or I, no? That, that was, that was not. You're under oath, Chairman Gensler, yes or I no? I know, it was not something I was aware of. I yield back the rest of my time. Thank you, Chairman. What do you think? Am I am I am I going crazy? If he was in charge of finance for Hillary Hillary Clinton's campaign, he has to he has to have known. Oh my goodness! I don't know enough about the legal system. That seems really bad for Gary there. Further, your response letter to the chairman and myself, the SEC staff admitted that the proposed rule quote could increase costs quote close quote related to energy prices under certain circumstances, but you provided no analysis, the actual information that we were looking for, not my letter to you congratulating you as becoming chair. We wanted the analysis on how the commission determined that. Yeah, and so this is, this is highlighting the whole point, right? He, he's, he gives an answer to people about the rules that we should be playing by, and he gives them in such a way where it... it it's kind of like my authority goes. So if I say this, I don't need to say any more. Interpret it how you interpret it. Um, and, and this is the whole problem. This is the problem with, with Gary Gensler's uh, time in the SEC. Is that he's not straight to the point. He operates in this massive grey area and uses the power and the position in order to kind of make justify that. Like, I know everything. This is not okay. I'm protecting everyone. And there's no follow-up description or analysis or reporting or reasoning behind those things. And it's just not fair. In the past two years, the Commission has proposed 53 new rules at a breakneck pace. That's twice as many rules as your predecessor, Mary Jo White and Jay Clayton, in the same amount of time. This ultimately is a big telling off by the boss. They've all seen it. We, as a community in this space, have done, I believe, enough to highlight this to the, his to his bosses, right? To the people who control his job and oversee his uh, department, his agency. I think this is extremely rewarding for us, especially in this in this area. But there's other areas that he works within that we haven't been affected by personally. But I will say this one thing: uh, there is an argument to say that Gary Gensler and his leadership of the SEC is potentially the reason why the US is behind right now on the world stage. The way he's operated, the way he's restricted innovation has allowed for this gap to be created between China, all these other countries, you know, getting into this new technology, diving in, like getting their CBDCs ready, like really having all these conversations about it. And who's not been involved in those conversations? The USA, right? So he's actually restricted innovation to such a degree to where now these other countries are in such a position where they can take over the US. I'm asking you, sitting in your chair now to make an assessment under the laws as exist, is Ether a commodity or a security? Without speaking to anyone. I know you've okay. repeatedly it's said that you're not going to speak to anyone, <laughs> except you've spoken to one, Bitcoin. 
I'm asking you, sitting your chair now. Look at his hand. I know, watching this again, I have to repeat some of these. Either a commodity or a security. Without speaking to anyone, he's nervous, bro. Oh my goodness, he's so nervous. Anyway, that's all the clips for this one. If you want to get into more serious content, then the algorithm has decided this video below me is one for you to watch. It thinks that you're going to enjoy it. Just remember, on your way out, click the like button, hit subscribe if you're not already. Stay emotionless, and I'll see you in the next one.